And, you know, this is going to be our first, I think I'm correct. I'm going to say it to, it's going to be our first half an hour show. We're trying something different. Yes, that's um, right. Um, so it, it is, the segue was very necessary because we, we were getting some deep shit right there. We, well, and that's the whole point of this channel is to get right. into the deep shit that's inspired by these movies that we can still right. look to the past and say, wow, they were dealing with this stuff then. <laughs> Sure. Hey, welcome to Classic Screenshots, Season 1, Episode 16. Oops, this way. Ching, Ching. Ching. So tell me about your week, Queen Bee. Well, you know, my week has been... Um... It's been a week. I have to say that I, I'm, I'm trying to get used to the, because where I was living before, I had en suite laundry. Now I have to walk down the street up the road to go get laundry. And it's just, it is, although it's a first world problem, I'm like, oh. First world problem. I'm just, it's just a lot. But in that beauty, I do see people who need the messages that we talk about. Right. And what are those messages that we talk about here on Classic Screenshots? Well, you see, those messages say that the the movies and life is like a screenshot, right? That... <laughs> Merch. <laughs> it, it, right. it teaches us that we, we... That movies are timeless when it comes to what we're going through. And regardless if they were made in 1933 or today, they're, 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 they're necessary. And just like in our, where we can go back and look at those screenshots and go, oh my God, we can also go back into our lives of wisdom and pain and take that, extract it um, and, and, and use it. So it really, it was, I was, when I go to the laundromat, I'm very blessed that I have healthy tools to get me through sadness. Yes. I would because have to here, agree. Yeah, because here, um, when I go to the laundromat, and I know it's done, the universe is, is showing me something. A lot of the people that I see around there have something called the fentanyl slump. Ooh. Yeah, and is that a big issue there? In huge, in, yeah, oh my god, huge! Um, it's it, it's almost magical in an uncharacteristic way where they take it and their body's like this, so they're walking around, and then suddenly they're like literally in half, and they're anywhere. Uh, their head is wow. touching, their head's touching the concrete. They're they're bent over a, a, a bar, and they're literally like just like that for hours hours so i have a question you know so, we see yeah. this happening all over america all over canada all over the right. world <sighs> what's the tipping point like where i've never i'm very fortunate very blessed that i have never been and have never struggled with an addiction or addictive personality right uh, and I know that that's rare. Um, I'm not addicted to drugs. I'm not addicted to food. I'm not addicted to booze, to smoking, to relationships, to any of that stuff. And I know, I know how lucky I am uh, because I know people have struggled with addiction. Yeah. And where do you think in a person's journey, obviously it's different for everybody, but it's so, it's so prolific, it seems. It always has been, but especially now, it seems more so. Where does a person get to the point of no return? Like where they have to crawl into a bottle or crawl into a, I don't even know what modality fentanyl right. comes in. Is it a pill? Is it a crack or... Well, I did, I did a talk earlier on Fireside um, 
And I was talking about pain. And I, if, you rearrange, if you rearrange the letters of pain, it says, I nap. And I believe that pain makes you want to sleep. And we can't afford to do that because we need to feel it in its entirety so we can teach it to the next generation how to go through it opposed to sitting in it. Because I do believe drugs or anything else keeps you in that pain because you wake up and you're not doing anything constructive to, to, to move through it. You're just putting it back to sleep. So one yeah. thing I can say that, that, that helped me going through losing, um, cause I, you know, I don't know anybody who knows this, but uh, I was expected to have a baby. It was about five or six months. Didn't happen. Um, got evicted. And it was all about in a month. Got evicted, realized my family was just no disrespect to them. They're on their journey. I'm on mine. Kudos. Yeah. But it, it taught me whether the universe was coming back to bitch slap me to say, you need to remember that the tools to get through your pain, I'm going to let you feel it again so you know what not to teach going forward. Right? Sometimes the lesson is what not to teach. Yeah, what not to teach. And, and, and me, how not to be. Yeah. yeah. And how not to be. So one thing I learned it was that I couldn't minimize it by affirmation in a way. There's nothing wrong with affirmations, but they have their place. I believe that affirmation is meant to support the good vibe you already have, not to create it. Yes. So I think, you know, and it also takes away my focus from the solution that I'm in because now I'm fighting with this affirmation to see if it's true or not, opposed to, I need to find a place. I need to do, do, do. I don't know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. that fight or flight. Right. Yeah. So affirmations. Yeah. I can say I'm powerful. I'm happy, but there's that voice that says, well, you are powerful. You are happy, but right now you need to feel your shit and deal with it. So you can teach going forward. Right. That Because we are all going to go through pain at some extent. And what we can't do, like you said in the beginning, is to get to that point of no return. We can't fall asleep. It is, it's the, whoever they are, the powers that be, whoever, they want us to fall asleep. That, that's just, we won't, we won't riot. We won't stand up and protest. We won't argue if we're sleeping. If we're numb. Yeah. Yeah. If we're numb, we won't, we won't. So what we need to do is feel it and then move forward. And the pain, the point of no return comes from within when you choose it. When right. you say, I, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, right. And I was blessed never to get there. Yeah. Yeah. That's especially an, an important um, message, I think, going into the season, going right. into a time that historically has been tough for a lot of people. Um, I know for me personally, you know, I just in September hit the 14 year milestone since my son passed away at age 13 from brain cancer, my only child, I was a single dad. And so, you know, it, these triggers come up every year, like clockwork, right whether it's a holiday or whether it's a birthday or whether it's a season change or whether it's, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. It could be Tuesday right. um, that, that something will trigger in me. And what I've noticed different this year is that I've started to experience in a more profound way um, sleep paralysis where my body will shut down right. and I will go into a deep sleep, but so deep that I'm aware I'm asleep. I'm right. lucid dreaming and I can't break out of it. I can't wake up. And I've realized that that's my body's way of protecting me from right. the pain. Right. I don't need a drug. Hey, thank my you. Body, you don't need my to body's going to do it anyway. My body's right. going to exactly. find a way to get me through the pain of right. loss. Right. And everyone's got their issue. Everyone's got their thing, their thing, you know, and I've learned to, and again, this is part of my, my, my gratitude and my privilege is that I don't have a schedule that I need to bend to generally. I can let my body do what it needs to do to process and protect me. Right. And so I know not everyone is in that situation, but 
my heart goes out to anyone who feels that they have to turn to a source of of tough. numbing it's tough. yeah it's tough that that will that will shut them down because they can't shut down they can't shut down the pain and this is this is a great segue into the movie that we're talking about this well, week yes because i was just about to say that the mother we're not i'm jumping ahead a little bit but i got to make the segue goddamn work is that um, <laughs> i made the segue this week well you were goddamn it <laughs> but it's it's the segue is that the mother there's a point in the story where the mother is just beside herself because she wants to be with her son. Like, where the fuck did he go? That's right. and, and, and she didn't shut down. She just got into her work. She's like, no, nope, right. he'll be, he'll be here. I'm just going to do this. And you know, this is going to be our first, I think I'm correct. I'm going to say it to, it's going to be our first half an hour show. We're trying something different. Yes. Um, that's right. Um, so it, it is, the segue was very necessary because we, we were getting some deep shit right there. We, well, and that's the whole point of this channel is to get right. into the deep shit that's inspired by these movies that we can still right. look to the past and say, wow, they were dealing with this stuff then, right? One of the, the key components of this film, I think, there's no business like show business, having come from an entire career in show business. Right is that there is that old tradition that we have of the show must go on. It doesn't true. matter if somebody is ad addicted and can't show up for opening night. You make it work. You make it work. You have an understudy. Oh, the, the, the son can't go on. Guess what? The mother's going on. Ethel Merman. You know what I mean? And that's, that's a great way. That's a great truth for life. Yeah. Um, because I know that many times in the situation I've gone through, Recently, I just, I was just like, I just, I just, I just want to go to, I just don't want to be here. I just can't do this anymore. And the show had to go on. Like, you know, if you, a lot of the list of the, the viewers didn't know that, you know, Henry was there like, every day he called me and I can tell you between you and me, I didn't want to do the show. I'm so fucking tired. I'm so fucking mad. I know, I know. I was so angry at the world. And he said, you got to, you know, he didn't even say do it. He just like, you need this. And he made me come to my own decision to let me know how much I needed this. Yeah. And then I realized that the show must go on. And that's how our characters learned in the in this, that thing, people will change people's dreams or aspiration. But the core was the family. But the show had to go on, even though one was wanted to go here. Uh, another go there. Uh, another, yeah. It doesn't mean the cup of the week this week. The show must go on. The show cup of must the week. Go the show must go on. <laughs> I know it. That is that is a great great metaphor for life. That yeah. I know that there's there's there are days when people feel like giving up, yeah, and giving in, mm -hmm. and leaving the planet. Leaving. Yeah, that's very well said. Um, and you know, I was even you know, not to gut off a little bit, but. You know, when we opened the show, we were talking about what, you know, I viewed. Um, you know, you you kind of wonder, because even in this movie, um, you know, let's like, I'm trying, I'm jumping all the way to the movie. So we, we, we begin with a family um, that are all, you know, the Jackson Fives. Well, this is yeah. the, the Donahue Five. <laughs> the Donahue, the five Donahues started yeah, out the with the couple, Donahue. the mom and dad in Vaudeville. Right yeah, around was, 1920, around 1919, around there, which is interesting because isn't that about the time when the Bluebird yeah. was made? Yeah. So this movie picks up right when the Bluebird came out as a film. Yeah. So culturally, I think it's kind of interesting that these two films sort of puzzle piece together in that way. What was going on right. in the culture? What was going on? And this is a a family of troopers. But a family of troopers. Um, they they. They, you know, I've always a little secret little, you know, if we could, you know, when this life has transitioned me into the next and if I have to come back, ow, 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 if I, <laughs> what to you? Back, I want to be in a family, good things, of course, um, that has these little gifts that got together. I mean, the Jackson Five did not have worked out so well. But the Donahue five or the five Donahues, it was very interesting because it was something that I always wanted to be a part of, that nucleus mm. of they had their back. And even though at one point, we'll get to it, where one of the sons says, I want to do this. 
And the father's like, no. And the everybody had their way of dealing with it. You know what I loved the best about that part was yeah. the mother goes and sees the son and she doesn't say, don't do it. I don't think she just said, you know what? You kind of just dropped it. So she was teaching him the language of how to tell somebody so something so out of character and out of the blue because she's like, your dad's not disappointed in you. He was, it was just so quick. And she still had that nuclear family nucleus. She didn't, it was I tell just you what? Sorry, ahead. Go ahead. Can I tell you what? That whole thing. Okay, so this is the eldest son. Yes. Right. There's the eldest son, there's the middle daughter, and then there's the youngest son. Yes. And the eldest son isn't a singer. In, he's a singer. He's a great singer. Yeah, he Johnny is. Ray, <laughs> Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray. Do you know um, uh, uh, Come On Eileen, that mo that song from the 80s? Come on, Eileen. Come on, Eileen. Yeah, right? And it, it starts out, the first lyric is, poor old Johnny Ray. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's him. That's this actor they're singing about. And why is he poor old Johnny Ray? His life actually mimicked the journey of this character. He was arrested not long before this movie was made for soliciting sex with a male police officer. Wow. Oops. And talk about a career killer, potentially. <laughs> um, but then they did the Hollywood thing and he got married to a woman that took the spotlight off of it. And, you know, people say, oh, he was bisexual or he was this or that. So in the movie, and this is the only movie he ever made. Oh, well, that's only a one. But you know what? He was the king before Elvis. Elvis looked to him as inspiration. Really? Well, that's that's, that's, that's really fascinating. He was a superstar. He was a superstar recording artist. And he was sort of one of those, like Little Richard, that bridged the worlds of popular music and rock and roll at that time. Okay. So... Really interesting story. Really look up the history of Johnny Ray. There are wonderful interviews. There's a, a documentary on YouTube. Um, but his character, as the eldest of the of the Donahue kids, of the three Donahue kids, um, he decides that he wants to be a priest. And that's the bomb. That's it. That's, that's the big bomb. Family. That's it. That's the bomb. But it's a metaphor for mom, dad, I have something to tell you. Well, yes. I'm a yeah, homosexual. It's, 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 that, that was the conversation. That's the conversation that every gay kid, LGBTQ, oh, we're flying. Oh, wow. I'm having, trip. I'm having some kind of, what's in my tea? I'm having some kind of, a, oh my God. Annie M, Annie M, what is going on? We're caught up in a cyclone. Oh my goodness. What was that? <laughs> That was so exciting. But that that whole priest thing right. was a metaphor for coming out as a gay well, yeah, person. Yeah, I, I picked I picked up on that instantly. Because I, I, I it's so easy to I, tell. I, I think what I did was um what what was it? I think in the beginning they say they give they they break down all the characters. They say yeah. the daughter is this way, and then they say something, and I can't remember. Right. Word, but when they came to Johnny Ray, they basically say that he wasn't the good, most good looking, but he could sing. Something but he was like, he was quiet and sensitive. He's not as as outgoing. Yeah, there was as a word he used, and I can't remember the word. There was a specific word. I was like, oh, that sounds like okay. But yeah, so when he came, um, when he came to say, <coughs> excuse me, I wanted to come out as a priest. Yeah, yeah, I want to come out as a priest. I instantly said, insert your family shit right here. Do you That's know what right. I mean? Like for me or my husband, it was, I'm going to marry a black woman or a white man. It's like, oh, ah! you right. know what I mean? So any kind of coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's coming out. So it, 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 it really, it really is a, a powerful scene um, in the sense that he says like, this is what I'm going to be. Like, it's not even maybe, or I'm, eh, this is it. I've, I've done my, I know. I've done it, and I don't care I've what done. you think. Yeah, I don't sorry. care. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. sorry. I don't care and, what you think. And the response from his dad was very um 
lenient to some of the responses that people actually go through. It was very yeah. lenient. It was very like, okay, uh, I want you to be this. And, you know, they had the little puff, poof, puff. Mama came in as a mother bear to, to do that. But what I loved about it was the sibling, the sibling cohesiveness in that decision. Yeah. That dog, the sister was like, I got you, bro. You do That's you. That's right. That's right. You. No matter what you are, no matter who you are, I love you. And she was sort of the, that one person in the family. For me, it was my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, when I came out at 18 as a right. gay man, I came out to my mom first. And her answer was, are you happy? Are you safe? That's all I care about. And that's kind of what Ethel Merman's character did in the end. At first she was shaken because it was out of the blue. They didn't expect it. Here is a family that lives, breathes, eats, drinks, theater, performing, right? right? Music and dance and comedy and all this. And all of a sudden, the number one son of the five Donahues, the family, is saying, I'm leaving the act and I'm... I'm taking it on, you know, in a different way, different costumes, different theater, but it's still a show, you know? Right. Uh, I appreciated that actually, because I think especially uh, Catholicism is really about the show. It's really about the pageantry of it that hooks people in much like the theater. Oh, you know, thank you for saying that. The, uh, you know, going back to the beginning, what pulled me in is that Technicolor. Yeah. Was the blues, the yellows, the, the outfits, the the headgear, the and I'm like, oh my god, they don't do television like that anymore. Like no. it, everything was so even the the opening scene where I don't know who she was in the black dress. Um, and every time she sat on the bench, it went off. Like she oh, that was, was, oh yeah, that was yeah, that, was, that kept going on. It was the play on words was gorgeous. Um, and how could we not? You know what I'm going to say now. The Let's gorgeous talk Marilyn. Let's of talk Marilyn. Marilyn. Marilyn what a Monroe. beautiful, like everything about her made me feel like, wow, what an underrated talent. Just Truly underrated. Sure. Like Truly she, sure. I love the fact that, you know, it's too bad that women, I mean, we, you, you find, anybody will find beauty in what they find beauty in. But I yeah. do love the sensuality and the, um, the voluptuousness of woman back like and Marilyn Monroe was a the epitome of that like it was she put on a little white dress with the, the middle singed in and a little a little slit and she was like done like, flower on her dress that sort of you know just yeah, basically I, I loved it. she was and even when she sat down um what was that song that she said you you when you get it you don't want it you know, yes. what I mean? after you get what after you get what you want, you don't want it anymore. Want it, right? You know, I can sit on your lap and in the moon. You know, it was just the and the words weren't necessarily sensual. He was like anybody could right. sing that, but when she put herself to that, she all was you dripping, see, honey. It oozed out of her. It just yes. oozed. Just well, oozed. and this ties back to what we've talked about in previous episodes about right. the woman's ability and right to use her body. And this is actually thematic to the film in right. her relationship with the mother, with Ethel. Right. Mother, right. Because the youngest son, uh, play, you know, falls in love with, with right. Marilyn. And at first it's because she's. Marilyn. Yeah. She's gorgeous, gorgeous. And, gorgeous yeah. and everything else. <laughs> but then she starts to, because she has self-respect and this was really, really a beautiful thing that, Marilyn's character was falling for the youngest son and she was the reserved one. He wanted to marry her out the gate. Right. Well, and that too. <laughs> oh, speaking, of, speaking about marriage out the gate, you know what part I loved was when the daughter of the five Donahues meets yes. a guy in a bar and he's just harassing her. And she's... <laughs> And you're wondering, where the fuck is this going? And I'm like, oh. And then she goes home and tells her mother. And your mother goes, you know what we used to do? We should get a bag of nickels and bonk them over the head. I'm like, Jesus. Plunk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but this is but this is the conversation that this movie was the 50s, you know, that wasn't, we weren't, we didn't have the, the, the 
Me Too movement yet, no. but it was women of different generations, mother and daughter, talking about how they handled men who yes. were only after them for sex. Thank you. Right? And the that, daughter, the daughter to, you know. We're not teaching our little girls or little men or little boys any of these things. Like, because, you know, we have been so inundated with just give yourself. Just do. Don't get no. fucked or worse. Just give yourself. To, and I have to say, I was a part of that. Nothing between you and me. I was quite um, uh, active. <laughs> Disclaimer alert. <laughs> well, because no one taught me about my worth. Like, you know, right. it, it was, it's up to me, but I didn't come from a family that said, here's a trick. Right? Nobody. Here's nobody. a bag of nickels. That was so rare. And I thought that scene, not only the one with Mitzi Gaynor, say, she's telling the her date, who's obviously trying to get her drunk. He's probably right. put a, a, you know, a, a Mickey in her, in her yeah. drink. He's probably trying to drug her and drag her. And... She's like, you know, let me tell you about the show. There's this wonderful scene where, oh, no, just put your hands out. She takes the two drinks, <laughs> and the one that he ordered for her is wicked strong. And she's like, mm, okay. And she places both the glasses on the backs of his hands, and he's balancing. He says, okay, okay, <coughs> now what? She goes, that's it. Good night. And she takes off. And he's stuck there with the glasses on. Right, she took her own power, her power, and she was vavoom. I mean, the she was gorgeous. On with Mitzi Gaynor, wow. I mean, she, her, her. You know, like we talked about the Disney princesses, their waists were the same same size as their neck. With her, it actually was like. That. Um, but it, but then but then, the mother comes back and she has the criticism toward Marilyn Monroe's character. Because she didn't believe that she was, because she, doesn't she make a crack about, you know, yeah, she's she knows what she's got and she uses it, or yes, or, he, or the son did, or something like no, that. No, when they're walking out the door, and the son had did, was in the hospital for drinking, she makes that crack. She says, you know, I knew she wasn't good for him. She just right, it's right. All so, so it's kind of a pot calling the kettle black in a way too, because right. she's. The very thing that she is mistrusting about Marilyn, she has taught her own daughter how to deal with. Ah, interesting, interesting. She very comes interesting. around. And this is what's beautiful. Each of the three children, this is what I love about this movie, is that each character has such a full backstory. Voluptuous. Then the mother, and Ethel Merman is voluptuous. She's got tits she out to here. She held her own. Way. Did you see, you know what I love before you get in there? Her white dress at the end, that oh. white dress, dynamite. What was holding it up? I dynamite. have no idea. Dynamite. Dynamite. And, and here she is not only being a world-class performer, and Ethel Merman was the queen of Broadway. She was in, she originated every Cole Porter, Gershwin, you know, they, they wrote for her. Right. You know, Irving Berlin, they wrote for her. She was a rare jewel. If, if you don't know Ethel Merman, go look up all her shit because she is amazing. I call her the Merm. The Merm. The Merm. <laughs> oh, you she know, she's, really she's a- Well into her 80s, she was working. She's a and not on Broadway. Hollywood didn't quite know what to do with her because she was so brass and so big in her voice and her character and her persona was all theater. So she had to play theater people or play overbearing you know, big characters in film. But she started doing film back in the 1930s. Right. She she was was doing, and she had no vocal training whatsoever. In fact, when she went to audition yes. for her first Broadway show, and which was Girl Crazy, written by George Gershwin, she went up to audition for him, and he said, have you ever had voice lessons? She said, no. She was a stenographer. She was a secretary taking that. For for a for an automobile brake company, I mean, and then she'd go out after work and do the whole nightclub thing as a singer. Never had a day of of lesson, and he said, "Do not ever take a lesson 
because what you have is special and unique Aww, that's and you don't want to ruin it. Everybody needs that message. Uh, you and know, so, I was thinking so that. She really carries this movie in a big way as the character carried her family in a big way. She has so much passion, so much love. Right. But she also is a professional working mother. Right. Which you didn't see a whole lot of in the 50s even. No, right? it's not. You know, um, you know, as we wind down here, I want make sure that the, the viewers, you know, if you haven't watched the movie like Henry, my co-host, um, co um, watch the movie. We're here to tell you about the movie. We're just going to give you our critique. So watch the movie. Um, but what what I what I, I want people to take away from and why maybe you should go and definitely watch that movie. The outfits, the colors, uh, just well, it's like the song, the costumes, the scenery, the makeup, the props, the audience that lifts you when you're down. Right. Right. That that song was originally from Andy Get Your Gun. Right. Right. And and Irving Berlin's great. And he wrote all the music for this. And they used all his music or a lot of his music right. for this film um, in a nostalgic sort of tie in of the generations, the older generation, the younger generation, not only of theater goers, but of families. And how do you navigate generational attitudes? That for me is what this movie is about. And what I was saying is that every character has their own unique journey the father yep he's a playa and the mother knows it right and they make a whole joke about it the, the that whole thing where where she puts on the blonde wig and she's fallen over and everything and he's surrounded by beautiful women they make a, a joke about it because it's just real that's how that's who he is and she yeah. they they've made an agreement the oldest son on his journey to priesthood and his own sort of sexual right. you know fantasy the other daughter who who is a performer through and through she's a dancer the youngest son who has a problem with alcohol and addiction not only addiction to booze but addiction to women and addiction especially to marilyn monroe right these all these things play out everyone goes off on their own unique journey and yet the family unit by the end including marilyn coming into it it's resolved. And that's and, the fantasy. That's the fantasy of Hollywood movie. It doesn't always end up that well, way. Well, you know what? It doesn't even, it's you know, I, I, I totally agree with you. And, you know, I would like to say in, 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 in summing this up is that it, you know, at the end where you see all everybody coming, I was looking at it in, in a spiritual terms as self, that all the different parts of me go out to, to be sure that, it is. It resonates with all of me, and at the end, I come back looking gorgeous, more gorgeous than ever. I could my physical, spiritual body could walk down in a chorus line, and now I sound like I'm in tune. So when I saw that, there was a physical aspect of it, and I saw the spiritual aspect of it that we all have to ourselves. We we feel that we've broken up, whether pain, anger, you know, abandonment, you know, anything. The ism schisms of life can break you apart or separate you. Um, and we really have to take initiative because nobody else is going to do it for you. You're That's going right. to have to pull that all the pieces of you and, and, and put it together that you know best and, and become the best version of you. And like we said, there is no business like show business. That That's it. Know. That's it, Queen B, you know, and, th and that family, you're right. You know, for some people, families do heal families can come back together and they can find themselves as a cohesive unit but for those of us that cannot for those of us that have broke for those of <laughs> <laughs> for those of us that, that come from broken families that can never be mended whether it's relationships with right. siblings or relationships with parents it, it's really you're right that the, the metaphor for this family is that every single one of these characters has a relatable story. We right. can relate personally to every single one of them in one aspect or another. And when we talk about coming back together, each one of these aspects that's represented by the five Donahues right. are five parts of ourselves that we can bring back together. We become our own family unit. Right. And it's on interesting. On a spiritual level. I love that. And that interesting, just for, I mean, the numerology dynamics, five mm. is the number of change. 
Mm. It's a, the number of freedom. It's a number of, you know, you know, freedom is in your hands, the five aspects. So it's, it's interesting that they use the number five. Um, it's interesting that, you know, um, the, 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 each person went on their journey and then came back and, and, and they became Reunited. strong. And they're very individual. They were very each an individual. Like even when the um, the son who said he wanted to be a preacher or a, a priest, yeah. he came back even stronger because he knew about the war. He went. He he just he wanted to give himself to 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 do his service. He was so much bigger than when he left. Just like the gentleman who's who drank. He was the so much. Son, yeah. Also enlisted in the military. Also, the military, the right. So they went out and they saw something of the world on their own terms. Right. right? The priest became a chaplain in the right. army. That's right? a chaplain. And story. then the younger one, the younger one came, you know, went into the Navy and he disappeared. He took off because he, he off. didn't want to ruin everyone else's life. He felt right. like he was imposing well, his just, issues. You know, just a side note. He was as he was sensitive as well because the dad said, "I'd be happier if I never saw you again." That's right. And fathers to their children, mothers to their children. Well, don't often do things my, my, don't, don't just a little side. Don't say that. <laughs> just a little side note. Exactly, <laughs> Queen B. Oh my gosh, we half an hour is not long enough. It's just fucking not long enough. But long we enough. are going to. Trying this out. If you say, "Man, I need a little bit more of this juice," leave it in the comment box. My co-host, okay. when he's not doing the great editing and the great showmanship here, Henry say he is doing his own podcast called the Lost Travelers Podcast, where he talks about tools that can make your life better. I suggest you chime in. That's something that we can use today. Thank you. And Queen Bee also has a podcast called The Cure Is Conversation, which is what this is about, too. It's all about, like, mind, life skills, and Queen Bee's about conversation, right? So this these conversations start here. Go down into our janky undercarriage and look up these movies. Link. The links are there. Go watch these movies and right. share in the comments. Doesn't matter. It could be a week or a month from now you come back and right. share in the comments, right? right? We want to engage with our, our growing audience. We right. have, what, about 10, 13? 13. Right? right? We have now almost 100 views on our first or over 100 views on our right. first episode. Go back and, and help us build this because, yeah, because we, we, we think you know, conversation <laughs> Just to say that TV is one of the most powerful tools to program your mind. Remember back in the day when they called TV programming and now it's shows? Ooh, um, interesting. Um, you know, and that wasn't just to tell you that that little piece of little interesting wisdom was given to me by our our our, our um wonderful friend. We had a talk with her on thing, her TN. Oh yes, on uh, on Clubhouse. Yeah, Clubhouse. And she just brought that focus because we used to call TV programming. But so the reason what I wanted to say was, let's take that, let's deprogram and really break down shows to see what they really mean and, and use that wisdom in our life. And so support us in getting the message out so we can, you know, you you know, you may think that who who's really getting the message with every share you could be sharing with someone who needs this message. You may not see the outcome, but you don't know how much the cure is conversation. You don't know what tools you could be sharing unwittingly to somebody. So for me, it's more of a labor of love, just like Henry C. I'll speak. I can't speak for everything, but I can say it's a labor of love. Um, so share, become a subscriber because it's more than just, Hey, let's get a bunch of views and subscribers. That's all fine and dandy. That's right. But what That's we want to get is better mental health by using the one thing society has used to program us against each other. Let's deprogram and make it a positive experience like Marilyn Monroe. Um, what was her name? Earth Ethel Merman. These are characters that even though when they were doing their thing at the time, they have become a substantial part of our life now because the lessons are timeless. They're timeless. Well, and we're finding a dumbing down happening in our time. Yes. That if Each. you look back to uh, the positive side of programming at that time, there were some pretty profound lessons that were being talked about in, 
I mean, look at the Bluebird. Look at look at you know the the silent films. Look at the early films of the twenties and thirties, forties, fifties. That like this one, there are there are profound messages that are very mature in terms of the development of our own psyche. And those of us that grew up in the TV generation cannot imagine what a film like "There's No Business Like Show Business" in Cinemascope on the big screen. You think it was glorious, you know, the colors and the costumes and the pictures on your on your mobile phone oh, screen. Oh, before we go in, the reason why I was imagine it bigger than life. I mean, amazing. Exactly. I mean, I had to watch it on my mobile phone because Telus has not yes. got my internet up yet, and I work from home, bastards. I love you, Telus. I really do. It's just it's a little frustrating. Anyways, but they did give me a little credit, so it's not all bad. So kudos, Telus. Okay. That's right, um, and they are not a sponsor of classic screenshots. No, I'm just bitching and whining yeah. about them. I'm just bitching and whining about them because I can't. Not yet. Yeah. Tell them they, that they can be sponsors if they really want to. They can be sponsors, and 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 that goes for our buffs too. If you want to sponsor an episode or a season, join us. Join us, and if you want to choose the cup of the week for next time, join us. Sponsor us. We're gonna be. We uh, we still are promising that we're gonna get our Patreon together. We're getting there. Get oh. our merch together. One last thing, guys. If you noticed, if um, we there are a couple of um, episodes that you have not been um, access to, so join us and we'll let you know where you can access those <laughs> those episodes. Um, uh, they're special ones, a little bit more lively and, and a little bit more, you know, savvy. Deep, deep, um, yeah. Deep, deep. So let us, you know, let us know. Um, and if you are interested in getting those four, um, uh, you know, we'll let you know how you do that, and we'll go forward. Yeah, we with jump that. from but, episode ten to episode fifteen. Yes, so this is episode <laughs> sixteen. So you got to go and help us get to that portal. That yes. we can open up to allow people in for the stuff that the general public doesn't get. Exactly. Um, because you like what we and we'll put it in our, our undercarriage too. If you like what we're saying now, you can imagine what no holds bar. I mean, there's no whole bar now, but we are growing. And um, you know what? I, I I'm I'm loving you, Mr. Henry. I love you, Henry Say. Um mwah. Mwah. <laughs> so, anyways, I want to say thank you. I'm Queen Be Divine. Thank you I'm for Henry watching C. this. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Oh, Go no. watch the movie. Go watch the movie and look below for next week's offering. Right. Because we always forget to decide on it before we record the episode. And so it's so much more exciting that way. It'll happen. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. And buffs, one of the benefits of being a buff once we start our Patreon, if you want to be a supporter, is that you will get to suggest films for us to watch that we can talk about and we can, I mean, this isn't really a reaction channel. It kind of is, kind of isn't. It's somewhere in between mental health and reaction. We're, we are reacting to these great films, but we are doing it in a way that, that hopefully will provide our audience tools for getting through some really tough times. You know, Yay, I believe that humanity is resilient. We got to find creative ways to get out of the mess we're in. You know what? I need a creative solution before I go. There is a child next door that yeah. screams the fucking living daylight out of her lungs and her mother screams back just as loud. And you know, I'm not, it's not my business to get but this guy every fucking night. God, and I'm not mad. It's just like, what? And I just like, and that's mental health. That really is, you know, finding tools to make you get through life. And I can tell you, this mama ain't gonna, so you know what? Parenting skills, yeah. <laughs> leave, me, leave me a comment. <laughs> leave a comment. How do we handle this? How do we, do, does she call Child Protective Services? Oh, does, I, mean, I think she's screaming yeah. now. I love to take the phone there and just, it, 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 it's, it's blood curdling. It is so, and it's not even just now. It's always around bedtime. So me and my husband are just about to sleep, and you're like, it is, and the walls are like fucking paper. It okay, can be like night terrors. Yeah, it could be. Well, no, I can hear the mother arguing with her. Yeah, you're going to bed. Oh, so I'm only going to bed. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you. The kid's like, how old is she? The child? I think it's about like three or four. Oh, psh. yeah, that'll pass. Well, it will pass. pass. But will I get any sleep up until then? <laughs> no. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to apartment living. <laughs> I think this is good. 45 minutes. I think that's a pretty good time. You know, uh, 30 minutes is not long enough. I think we'll shoot for 45 minutes. We'll and if you have any other ideas, if you like it, let us know down below. Be kind, but you know, be kind, but be honest. Yeah, be honest. Be honest. What do you think? I don't feel like we got really into it. I don't think it's enough. No, but you know what? That's enough because we're not here to rehash the movie. We're here to. It's as good as a feast. I know. Thank you. We're just here to highlight the happy, the parts, the happy, the sad, the things that we can learn. And it's you, up to our listening and viewing audience, to tell us where we need to focus more in. Or what we need to It's all you, right? So just share your opinions. This is what place where you can share your opinions, and it's all good. So do it. And we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, Queen Bee.